Mibruo Balthazar had no idea that his life was about to change when he received an invitation to watch the Hope for Africa series sponsored by Hope Channel. Recently, Hope Channel sponsored this evangelistic event in Kenya. Hundreds of thousands of people experienced life transformation and were baptized through the powerful Word of God, presented at about 10,000 locations throughout East Central Africa, broadcast on Hope Channel platforms, and shared online. Mibruo, the founder and leader of a Christian church in the nearby country of Burundi, was invited to watch the event at one of the downlink locations. In 2011, Mibruo embarked on a spiritual quest for biblical truth. Frustrated by his search for a church that fully embraced his yearning for authentic spirituality, he established his own congregation. He watched the presentations for three days and was captivated by what he learned from the event's main speaker, Pastor Mark Finley. Mibruo, eager to share this newfound information, invited his congregation to join him in watching the rest of the programming. Mibruo made a life-altering decision, dedicating himself anew to Christ and choosing to be baptized as a Seventh-day Adventist. Half of his congregation joined him after a few days in this transformative journey. I am extremely happy to have received the message of salvation and even happier because my congregation willingly joined the Adventist church. My greatest desire is to see the people in this area come to Christ because time is very short and Jesus is coming soon. By the end of the series, the other half of the congregation also embraced the faith and were baptized. This story celebrates the profound influence that Hope Channel programming can have on countless hearts in Africa and around the world. Hope Channel's mission is to share the gospel through a global network. Currently, they broadcast more than 80 channels on television as well as produce content for social media and digital platforms, including YouTube, in more than 100 languages. Hope Channel celebrated its 20th anniversary in 2023. They seek to extend their network to fulfill Jesus' command to take the gospel to all nations. Please pray for Hope Channel as they open new channels to reach unentered areas. Thank you for supporting the mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Happy Sabbath, Church. I'm sure we are all happy to be here to worship, worshiping together. It's a great day that the Lord has prepared for us. You know, one thing that I noticed out there is the weather is so good. The weather is so good, and uh, it's warm in our hearts to be here worshiping together. And we just want to praise God for yet another week, yet another opportunity for Him to give us this opportunity to worship together. And uh, I want to welcome everyone. I want to welcome our regular members, and I want to welcome all our visitors who are visiting with us for the very first time. And um, we have so many visitors that are visiting with us today. And uh, in a special way, I want to just say welcome to Helena. Helena Bo, Helena is sitting here with Lucina. Uh, Helena, just wave. And uh, Lucina, and we all know Lucina, and uh, welcome to Westminster Church. Any other visitors visiting with us? Okay, so maybe there are still some other visitors that I saw. Maybe they are still in other classes, but we want to welcome you. All those who are watching online, we want to welcome you. We hope that you enjoy our service together as we worship together today. Today is going to be a great day. I have a few announcements that I have to make here before we get into our service today. Uh, <clears throat> the first announcement that I have is Sabbath School Quarterlies. They are ready, those who have subscribed for the Sabbath School Quarterlies. <coughs> you can go into the personal ministries room and collect your Sabbath School Quarterlies. Uh, women's Ministries, there is an event, 3 to 5 May. Check your bulletin, and uh, if you uh, have not subscribed, you can go on our website. You can get... 
uh, you can subscribe to receive the bulletin through your email. And um, next Sunday, next Sunday, there is uh, a soup and sandwich where we go to Ted Kuhn Towers. We encourage the church members to join as we go and prepare this, uh, this service for those who are less privileged. And um, uh, next Sabbath, next Sabbath is a great week. Next week is a great Sabbath that we have because we have some guests who are coming. And for that, uh, I, will have, uh, I will have Shannon to, to do a quick announcement for, for next Sabbath. Um, so Shannon. Thank you, Lloyd. Um, I don't know how many of you realize, but next Sabbath we're having, next Friday evening, we're having Phil uh, Brewer from Silver Hills come down and teach us all about how to get good rest. Do we all need that? Amen, amen. So, uh, but in the meantime, we've got a challenge for you. So come and see me after, or check out the website and, and check the, uh, the QR code. And this challenge is from uh, tomorrow. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's from tonight or tomorrow. It's, it's up to you. Um, until Phil comes. And we've got things like uh, finish eating three hours before you go to bed, power down all your, your uh, devices, an hour, or at least an hour before bed, etc. So we want you to take part of this challenge because next week we want to get your testimony as, as to how it worked in helping you get great rest, okay? So come and see me afterwards and we'll have these logs for you to, to do or check out the website. And there is a card in the lobby that I would like you to all sign for Pastor Ellis's 90th birthday. So if you haven't done so yet, do so before you leave today. 90th birthday out in the lobby. Please sign that card. He's, he's at home, and he would just be thrilled to receive it. So thank you for doing that as well. Okay, today's service, we have the young people, young people leading us in song. So the young people, while they are coming uh, to lead us in song, uh, I would like to say tomorrow, there is a fun day that is prepared for adventurers. There's an adventurer fun day, and it's at Deer Lake School, and the time is 11 a.m. Uh, tomorrow. Let us support our adventurers, and let us support our young people. We have a great Sabbath that the Lord has prepared for us, and we want to ask the Holy Spirit to lead as we enjoy through the music that the young people are going to lead with us. Let's sing with them. Let's sing from our hearts. Let us praise God together, and Enjoy Amen. the rest of your Sabbath today. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Hey. Happy Sabbath to each and every one of you. This morning as we sing, we got the youngsters here going to be leading out. I, I want to just um, uh, say this morning as we begin, in the back of your mind, okay, have the thought um, of what God has done for you this week. Um, as we sing this first song, have the thought of what God has done for you this week. And sing with us. Sing, 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 sing. Um, good morning, church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. So our first song is Thank You, Lord. So we can thank the Lord for being here safely. Um, please sing with us as we thank you. If we sing the song.
took my darkness and gave me a light. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You took my sin and my shame. You took my sickness and healed all my pain. Thank you, Marching to Zion. Every 
Our next song is Above All. faithfulness. Please stand up. Show. 
everything was on our way. Thank you for protecting us and blessing your holy name. Help us to be nice and bless this Sabbath day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God is good, church. And all the time. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Our offerings today will be directed towards Hope Channel International. Now, as many of you might know, Hope Channel has been very inspiring towards the global community throughout the years. Not only just as the Adventists, Hope Channel has inspired lots of lives and lots of people to live in the way God intended for us to live. With your offerings today, Hope China can continue to produce high quality Christian content to share with the global community so that we may have more people come and join us in church. As we read in Proverbs 11 verse 25, Proverbs 11 verse 25, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. By faithfully supporting Hope Channel International, you're not only blessing others, but yourself. As well by bringing hope to those who need it the most and telling them of the love of Jesus Christ. May the deacons please stand. Let's pray. Dear Lord Almighty, we thank you, Lord, for your guidance and protection throughout the week, and we thank you for giving us this opportunity to gather and worship you. Lord, may we bless our offerings today and may, may you continue guiding us to live in the way you intended for us to live. We pray this by believing and trusting in your almighty name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. I am looking for all of the young people to come up because I have a story to share with you. At this time, we're going to have our children's story. All the young boys and girls.
you'll see a few more coming up. Wonderful. Nice to see all of your smiling faces today. How is everybody doing today? Good? Are we awake? Are we ready to hear a story? Okay, this is a, what we call a rerun. I've told this story, but it was a long time ago, I think sometime before some of you were born. It's called The Stranger. Are you ready? I'm old, so I gotta read from notes, okay? So a few years ago, after I was born, my dad met a stranger who was new in town. From the beginning, Dad was fascinated with this enchanting newcomer and soon invited him into our home to live. The stranger was quickly accepted and was around from that time on. So as I grew up, I never questioned his place in our family. In my young mind, he had a special place. Now, my parents were complimentary instructors. Mom taught me good from evil and dad taught me how to obey. But the stranger, he was a storyteller. He would keep us spellbound for hours on end with adventures and mysteries and comedies. If I wanted to know anything about politics or history or science, he always knew the answers about the past, understood the present, and even seemed to understand and predict the future. He told my family about the first Major League Baseball game. He made me laugh, he made me cry. The stranger never stopped talking, but Dad didn't seem to mind. Sometimes, oh, I'm sorry, sometimes Mom would get up quietly while the rest of us were shushing each other to listen to what he had to say, and she would go into the kitchen for peace and quiet. I wonder if she ever prayed for the stranger to leave. Dad ruled over our household with certain moral convictions, but the stranger never felt obligated to honor them. Profanity, for example, was not allowed in our home, not from friends or any visitors, or even us. Our longtime visitor, however, got away with four-letter words that burned my ears and made my dad squirm and made my mother blush. My dad didn't permit us to use alcohol, but the stranger encouraged us to try it on a regular basis. He made cigarettes look cool, cigars manly, and pipes distinguished. Any idea who this guy is? No? Okay, we'll keep going. He talked much too freely about inappropriate relationships between unmarried people. His comments were sometimes blatant, sometimes suggestive, and generally embarrassing. But I know that my early concepts about relationships were influenced strongly by this stranger. Time after time, he opposed the values of my parents, yet he seldom was rebuked and was never asked to leave. More than 50 years have passed since the stranger moved in with our family. He has blended right in and is not nearly as fascinating as he was at first. You're looking at my notes, aren't you? <laughs> still, if you could walk into my parents' den today, you would find him still sitting over in his corner, waiting for someone to listen to him talk and watch him draw his pictures. Now, would you like to know the name of this stranger? Television. Television. He has a wife now, and we call her computer. Their first child is cell phone, their second is iPod, and just born a few years ago were grandchildren, iPad and iPhone. You have something to say? Okay, go ahead. To be honest, they sound like the people in the jungles. Yeah, they sound like the people in the jungle. So although all of this technology could be used for good things, the enemy has used these devices for evil. 
I'll let you in on a little secret too. There wasn't a television in our house till I was six. Because I'm really old. <laughs> Everywhere, it's in our home. It's in our home, it's in our pockets, it's in our cars, it's everywhere. So, the inspired writing of the prophet says in the Acts of the Apostles, those that would not fall to prey of Satan's devices or traps must well guard the avenues of the soul. Do you know what the avenues of the soul are? It is your eyes, it is your ears, and it's your mouth. So we have to avoid reading, seeing, or hearing things which suggest impure thoughts, as well as speak pure th words, right? So we need to be very careful about what we watch on any screen, whether it be a computer, television, iPad, iPod, or hear through any speaker, or what things we choose to read. Now, if the AV people could put up the text on the screen for me, if you wouldn't mind. We have a text, and it says from... Philippians 4, 8 it says, Finally, brethren, that's brothers and sisters, whatever things are true, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be of any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So be careful what you watch, be careful what you listen to, and be careful what you read, and make sure they're in accordance with God's will. You have a question? What if you don't have any device in your house? Then you are very unusual. If all you have are good books to read, then that is wonderful. That is really wonderful. I know, and as I said, I'm really old. Television didn't come on until 8 in the morning. It went off at 10 o'clock at night. And we only had two channels. So. <laughs> so we have to be careful because we are constantly bombarded with media, and those media programs aren't necessarily good for us. So, what do you think? We have to be careful about what strangers we allow in our lives, right? Okay, who would like to pray for us today? I know you're enthusiastic, but this young lady, would you like to pray today? You don't know. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm going to let our little faithful servant pray today. You're going to pray for us? Okay. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for all the food they made for us. Um, Help things to go well on this day and for the next day and next days and the next days and the future. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for coming and listening to the story today. You may return to your seats. kneel with me as we pray. so far this week. Lord, we come in your presence this morning to give you all the praise and glory because you are our almighty God. Lord, we thank you for um, the sunshine and for bringing us here safely. Lord, we ask that you please forgive us of our sins, cleanse us, and 
Um, cover us with the robe of righteousness. Lord, I pray that at this time you be with um, those that are sick, Lord. There are so many that are sick, even in our congregation this morning. But Lord, I pray that you be with, um, especially with Lucy, Anna, Terry, Carl, Graham, Elaine, Margaret, Matt, Val, June, Matthias, Tanya, Deborah, Fifi, Laura, Alexander, Ellis, and Enga, Lord. They are suffering. I pray that you heal them, Lord, and touch them with your healing hand. You are the almighty physician, so Lord, I pray that this morning you visit each one of them and you be with them in their bed of suffering. Lord, there are so many other things that are going on in the world today, crime and hatred. Lord, we see it through um, the war in Israel and Gaza and Russia and Ukraine. Also, conflicts in Eastern Africa and Haiti, Lord. I pray that you be with those people and you comfort each and one of them. Lord, I pray that you send your spirit to bring peace among them and that you, you be there among your people. Lord, I pray at this time that you be with um, our church leaders as well. Help us and bring your Holy Spirit to minister to each one of them and be with them, Lord. I pray that you also be with the young people of this church, Lord. The devil is trying to destroy them. And Lord, I pray that you be with them and you, um, you bring them strength and courage to withstand the temptations of the enemy, Lord. At this time, I pray that you be with families and children. Lord, I pray that you be with parents as they raise their children to give glory to you, Lord. I pray that you be with the children as well and help them to be obedient and to learn about you. I pray, Lord, that you be with those that are seeking um, for jobs or house. I pray that you be with them and, um, Lord, you, you make a path for them in their lives. I pray that you be with the missionary workers that are out there um, fighting for spiritual um, and religious matters. Lord, I pray that you be with them. And Lord, you, you go before them and you help them and give them wisdom and strength to, to, pro to um, share your gospel to every corner of the earth. Lord, we know that you are soon coming, so help us, Lord, to um, do your work so that you might be coming soon. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Sometimes I fall to my knees and pray, come Jesus, come, let today be the day, sometimes I feel
today be the day. Happy Sabbath, Church. The scripture today is from Romans chapter 12, verse 9 to 21. I invite you all to stand as we read together. Um, verse 9 says, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another, no lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with, humble, with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, 
If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap cause of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. Amen. May I sit? Thank you. Welcome and happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. I just wanted to uh, thank the congregation here um, for the presentation last week, but also for the um, gift to go to the Tulip Festival there in Skagit Valley. It was a beautiful, beautiful uh, day that my wife and I enjoyed with the other group, with the rest of the group, I should say, and um, it was a wonderful occasion. We have some pictures there if you're on WhatsApp. You'll see some of the pictures there. And um, my wife and uh, I just want to thank you for that. And um, I just want to open up in a word of prayer before we uh, begin today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful day. We pray that your Holy Spirit will be present continually throughout this service. And I pray that um, you would be the one who is glorified. And uh, as we delve into this passage, I pray for your anointing of your spirit upon me as I speak your words. Lord, I pray that you would be glorified through it. And I pray that each one of us would receive food, spiritual food, that will encourage them and strengthen them for service. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I I read a touching story last night, and about a humble, consecrated pastor whose uh, young son had become extremely ill. And after the boy had undergone an an exhaustive uh, series of tests, the father was told the shocking news that his son had a terminal illness. The youngster knew Christ as his Savior and his Lord, so the Protestant minister knew that death would come and he will see Jesus. But he wondered how to inform one in the bloom of youth that he soon would die. After earnestly seeking the direction of the Holy Spirit, he went with a heavy heart through the hospital ward to his son's bedside. After earnestly seeking, or excuse me, um, after that, he read a passage, I should say, in, to his son and prayed with him. And then he gently told him that the doctors could promise him only a few more days. And so he asked them, are you afraid to meet Jesus, my son? And so the father had asked him this, and blinking away a few tears, the little fellow said bravely, no, not if he's like you, dad. You see, The son was ready to meet his Savior, all because he saw in his dad a reflection of his Savior. The father had kept the faith, had kept the high calling of God in Christ. 
Christ. And this resulted in his son's genuine trust in his dad's master. Today we will see what is the high calling of God that prepares us to meet our Savior with confidence and assurance with no need to fear death. How to be a servant of all, to all people. We're going to study this passage a little bit more in detail. And um, last week, if you were here or you heard this message, you would have understood that the first nine or eight verses there, we discussed about your high calling in the context of service and your gifts, spiritual gifts. And so Paul continues now, and he begins by saying, let love be without hypocrisy. I want to pause there for a moment. It's interesting that the Apostle Paul here starts with that attribute, love. And uh, if you have read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we did talk about that last week. And there you see all the spiritual gifts. You see all the spiritual gifts there, right? What follows after chapter 12 in 1 Corinthians? The love chapter, exactly. Thank you, Malcolm. The love chapter. Immediately following the the, 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 the exhortation and the encouragement on seeking for those best gifts, that which God has called you, and he immediately begins with love. Love is an important aspect when we do service for God. We can be gifted, but if we do not have love, what does it say there in that love chapter? You are nothing. You're but a sounding brass. If you are prophesying, you're but sounding brass. So one can be gifted, but not always one has the attribute of love. And so it's important when we're talking about our high calling your high calling, um, we need to talk about love a little bit more. And we look at this particular passage in verse 9, and it says agape. Now, everybody knows what agape is, right? If you haven't, um, let me inform you. It means uncondi unconditional love. Unconditional. It's the godly love. And there's three types of love in the Greek, right? There's eros, that's the sexual love between a husband and wife. And then you have what? Filio, that's the brotherly love amongst one another. But in this case, he uses the word agape. Agape, love. And so agape is important and central um, theme throughout the Bible. And, uh, but it seems not always the priority in our lives. And so it's important that we establish this, that as Christians, we must love. As a Christian who is saved by the grace of God, we must love others. Without hypocrisy, right? Without hypocrisy. What is he talking about here when he talks about without hypocrisy? We must remember that we must be sincere, right? We must be sincere when we are loving. You can, on the surface, look like you're loving someone, but in beneath it all, you have other ulterior motives. Whoa. 
And so we need to remember that it's unconditional, right? So there should not be any other selfish motive involved in loving. And that's important, as I believe Paul is saying. In other words, don't be pretenders. Be genuine. Be sincere. So it's important that we understand this as we build a foundation of our calling. It really is our foundation. Love is important. Love one another is the great golden rule. We need to remember this. Moving forward, I want to take us in to this um, next phrase, and it's talking about abhor what is evil. In other words, hate what is evil. Dislike what is evil. So if you, as you look into this, it's a sense of the imperative. The imperative is a, a direct command. Paul is using this verb here as a strong one and expressing utter abhorrence of the evil thing. So why does he talk about love? And right after that he talks, because you will not hate without God's love in you. For God is love. You need, that's why he connects the two, because you cannot hate it like you ought to hate it, the evil thing. We must despise it. That's really what he's getting at. This is not a sentimental love, okay? This is a love that means business here. God's love. True love involves a deep hatred for all that is evil, for evil can never benefit the beloved. There will be a special hatred for the evil in the beloved and the evil that touches the beloved, but Paul's expression is general. He is saying that the person who really loves with the deeper fervor of Christian agape will have a holy hatred for every evil thing. And then he goes on and he says, cling to what is good. What is good? Cling to it. So what is he talking about here? It's actually a picturesque verb. It can mean to glue. To glue. This use does not occur in the New Testament, but it indicates that the tie it denotes is of the closest sort. The Christian's attachment to the good is a very firm tie and not a casual approval. Interesting. The Christian is committed to the way of goodness. His whole life is wrapped in it. Cling. It's like glue. Follow what is good. Do what is good as a person who is serving the Lord in the uh, abilities that you have been given by God. No matter what your gift or calling is, you must demonstrate this. Cling to what is good. Let's move on to verse 10. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. Giving preference. Interesting. You see, in this context, brotherly love, it says. If you look at that, that's the other love. That's the Philadelphia love. You know, the city of brotherly love, is Philadelphia, right, in the U.S. That comes from the Greek. So what, what's the um, understanding of that love? It's like a family. You love one another. 
a, your own family. But Paul is saying that that kind of love must flow amongst the brethren, the sisters and brothers in Christ, uh, in the body of believers. We must be, you know, what hurts others should hurt you. What bothers others or what their burden is should be your burden. This is kindly affectionate. Yes, we can hug and we can shake hands and we can do that. that it's, it's okay, it's good. But you are kind. Words of kindness is important. One of the fruit, one of the attributes of the fruit of the Spirit, right? So, in honor, preferring, what's it say? In honor, giving preference to one another. Esteem others better than yourselves. Put them on a higher level than yourself. When you are a humble individual, no matter, no matter your status in life, no matter if you have degrees behind you, you still put yourself lower and esteem the brother who may not have the degrees you have, for example. No matter their status, we must stay low and esteem others higher. That's the context here. That's the, uh, the uh, understanding that Paul's trying to promote here or convey. You see, the Jews had the idea that they were all brothers, a concept that the Christian took over and applied to themselves, as we have seen. But the idea of brotherly love in such groups is not found anywhere but among the Christians. They saw themselves as a family in a special sense. God was their father, and they were all brothers and sisters. Therefore, they were united in a love that other people saw only in those of a natural family. Can you imagine that? That is the kind of love we ought to have to our brothers and sisters. There is really no race in God's family. Did you know that? It's only one race. Christians. Doesn't matter. There's no other race. God says, come on. We're all together in this. There's no Yes, there's color, of course, right? But that should not be a barrier, right? Culture should not be a barrier. Well, I'm only going to love my clan. <laughs> no, that's not what Paul is saying here. Paul says you love them all. Brotherly love is important. I'll let you chew on that. Let's go on. Verse 11 not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So the word lagging signifies indolent or lazy, okay? I think you all understand that, lazy. And Paul is telling the Romans that where zeal is, be diligent is needed, be diligent. Don't be slack in service for him. Don't be slack. Be diligent. Do with all your efforts. This is what Paul is saying. And um, we move to the next phrase, and it's talking about fervent in spirit. Fervent in spirit. Be determined. Determined that I'm going to, by God's grace, do what he tells me to do. Whatever it is, I'm going to go on that missionary journey. I'm going to help bring others to Christ. Be determined. I want to do this. Well, if God leads me, then I'll, I'll go. And we're kind of casual. If you want to do the work of the Lord and you're asking him, 
I believe it's always a yes. But where and when could be the question you may want to ask. He always wants you to do the work of the Lord. Always. Okay? That's not the question here. Just ask for direction. God will direct you. God will direct you, and you will be blessed. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. This is service again. That same word we talked about in chapter 12, verse 1. And so we want to be willing servants to the Lord. Verse 12 talks about rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. In prayer. Rejoicing. What's, it, what's this talking about? Rejoicing in hope. Be joyful in hope. See, both the joy and hope are characteristic in uh, characterized there in the New Testament. They are New Testament concepts. And so the early Christians often had little, little to be joyful about or to hope for in this word. But they rejoiced in the Lord always. They rejoiced in the Lord always. Philippians 4.4. 4. Then they knew Christ in them. The Christ that was in them. They knew. The hope of glory. Colossians 1. And 27. It is not that hope is itself the object of the Christian's joy. Rather, now get this, so it's not what the object of the Christian joy. Rather, it is that which is being what it is inevitably leads the Christian to rejoice. To rejoice. The hope lifts him out of his present difficult Situ or circumstances, and rejoicing is the inevitable result. Again, we have the foundation of love, right? We have the foundation that God has called you into some ministry. And no matter what we get attacked for, you see, a Christian cannot live outside of his giftedness. You're not a Christian then. You can't be. So if you're gifted in something, allow God to use you in that gift. Then you will demonstrate Christ's love to others. But if you're outside of his giftedness, you will be lost. I'm sorry to say, you will be lost. Pastor, that's a little extreme. Is it? Think about the parable of the talents. Do I need to say any more? What happened to the servant that hid his talent? What happened to it? Taken from us. That's right. And he was cast to utter darkness. And those who did something with what they had, they entered into the joy of the Lord. Friends, God's servants, want to walk in the giftedness that God has called them to, whatever he's called you to, I should say, and he wants you to allow him to use you, and he wants you to be filled with his joy. And no matter what comes, you will have this hope that one day soon, Jesus is coming, but you have it in you. The hope is in you. The hope of glory. Oh, friends, are we getting the picture here? Are we getting the picture? And so we look, we must be patient in tribulation. There's going to be oppression. There's going to be persecution. The godly what? Shall not suffer persecution. Don't say amen to that because that's not true. It's not true. It's the godly shall suffer persecution. I know I tricked you a little bit. I'm sorry. But you see, the godly shall suffer persecution. That's what will happen to God's people who ultimately walk in their giftedness. Every one of you have a gift. And many of you have more than one gift. I believe that wholeheartedly. And God has called you. And so 
Are you, are you getting the picture of this passage? I hope you're getting the clear picture. God wants you to walk in your calling, and he wants you to be his servant. And so we move now to uh, continuing steadfastly in prayer. The last phrase of that verse in verse, in verse 12. Continuing steadfastly in prayer. How is this? It is very important part of the Pauline understanding of Christianity. Faithful is perhaps not forceful enough word. Okay? Or continuing steadfast. Being, it's not forceful enough. Paul uses the strong word. Suggests not only the constancy with which they are to pray, but the effort that is needed to maintain a habit so much above, the na above nature. We are left in no doubt, but that persistent prayer is a necessary part of the Christian life. It's a necessary part. Friends, you will need to pray. As you walk in his giftedness, you will need to pray. It will naturally come as a result. If you truly are walking in his giftedness, you will need to get on your knees or bow right where you are if you can't get on your knees. And you will do, need to do that often. Lord, help me. This person's attacking me. This person's saying some pretty bad things. Lord, keep me under control that I do not lash out to this person. I need to represent you well. Wow. Amazing. And see, the Apostle Paul is one who persecuted Christians. We know the story. But the fact that Stephen didn't retaliate made a big difference. Made a big difference in his life. Began, God began speaking to him. You see? And he, he was later converted. We know the story. But he was influenced by Stephen. Stephen. The evangelist, the deacon Stephen, he was influenced by him. And so God is calling us to a closer walk with him in prayer. Verse 13, distributing to the needs of the saints, giving, given to hospitality. Let me explain this. Most uh, scholars accept the word here, needs, okay? But some cite Zan, scholar, for the view that Paul is referring to contributions to his collection for the poor saints in Jerusalem. Whichever, the main point is we are to take the care of one another. See, the early church took a deep interest in the poor whose lot in the first century was often desperate. Calvin commented, it, it, it generally happens that those who are more weighed down by poverty than others and stand in need of help are treated with greatest contempt. Interesting. We can be very judgmental. Can't they get themselves a job? Aren't they... Uh, smart enough to go get some education. We need to be careful. You know, we need to be careful. With love, we can care for the needs of those who do not have much. Our first concern is to meet the needs of the poor so-called class. We often assume that the poor do not need, but God has given the poor, and they, they will always be around, the Bible says. To be a test for us saints. All right? Not to say the poor are not saints. I'm not saying that. But how it will really de reveal what's in our heart. It does reveal our selfishness much. And we need to be careful about that. We need to care. God offers these opportunities to get the selfishness out of us. Have you ever thought of that? That's what, one reason why he does that, to get the selfishness out of us. We need to be willing. 
And so, we want to talk about giving to hospitality. I want to just read what I found in my readings. To practice hospitality, it says, the exercise of hospitality was of great importance to the church of that day. It was not always possible or desirable to stay in inns, what we call motels or hotels, and in any case, inns were not always available. Interesting, but Christians like Paul traveled widely in the exercise of their ministry, and it mattered very greatly that wherever they went, they found hospitality among the believers. And they were all one family, and they readily welcomed as guests even believers whom they had never met. And, uh, and the verb for practice is unexpected and points to vigorous effort. Interesting. Leonard reflects on that, and Christian hospitality must inconvenience us more than that of the world. If it inconveniences us, so what? That's the opportunity to bless somebody. Somebody comes by, needs somewhere to lay their head, offer them your room, a room in your home, somewhere. That's hospitality to its core. Friends, we need to be open. See, Paul's not advocating a pleasant social exercise among friends. But the use of one's home to help even people we do not know if that will advance God's cause. You see? Wow. This is going deep. I know. I know it is. But that's why I shared it. Because I think we need something to chew on as Christians. We need to. We need to get out of our slumber and we need to become active. Amen? Verse 14. Bless those who persecute you and bless and do not curse. What's he referring to here? Bless can be used in various senses. All good. It's all good. Here it will be used in the sense, what? Ask God to bless. Paul takes the verb he has just used for pursuing hospitality or practicing hospitality and enjoins his readers to call down God's blessing on people who pursue or who persecute them. What? Bless all the nice people, oh God, please. Is that what he says? No, it says bless the bad people too. Oh, wow. The oppressor. I don't like that, Pastor. They don't deserve it. Mm. They don't deserve my, God's blessing. God reigns on the just and the unjust. Right? He does. So let's ask God to bless our enemies. Take that to practice. You want to be in his high calling. That's what he told us last week, right? You said, God, I want to be, I want to do your, your, your biddings. That's what he's asking you to do. He's asking me and you and every Christian to go to that far, to bless. God bless them and be a part of that blessing too. Your enemy needs, well, we'll talk about that. I'm getting ahead of the game here. Later on, we'll talk about that. Curse not. That's the opposite. That's the opposite. Right? Wow. Do not curse. We are not to, oh, we lash out those, those rascals. We may, that's, an, that's actually a nice term. Right? But you can put whatever adjective you want in there to describe and we're not to do that. We're not supposed to do that. Completely the opposite. Because God created them too. They just may be not at your stage in life. But if you influence them with God's love, 
Who knows? One day they, they will learn what you've learned, and they will do it to others, as you have done it unto them. Wow. Paul was persecuting the Christians, right? I referred to him earlier. Stephen, what did he do? Lash out at Paul. Lash out at those persecutors. Did he? He looked to heaven. He saw heaven open up. I don't believe they saw it. I believe he saw it in vision. Somebody, wow, he saw it. It's beautiful. He was smiling. They're throwing the rock, stoning him, but he's smiling. God, bless them. Bless them. Don't hold this against them. Forgive them, oh God. Oh, man. <laughs> God is looking for people who are committed. This is not, this is just, this is not plain church, friends. Is it? Hmm? Are you committed to doing his will? But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. But, for he causes his Son to rise on the evil. I'm reading from where? Matthew 5, that's right. Verse 45. Uh, right, to rise on the evil and the good and sends ra- rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. If you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? If you're only caring for your own, ones that are nice to you, what more? That's what the world does. You're no different, but God wants you to reveal his love to them. And so we do not even the tax collectors, collectors do the same if you greet only your brothers what more are you doing than others do not even the gentiles do the same therefore you are to be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect so it's in this context of service doing good to others verse 15 rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep do you weep with those who weep what's this talking about Paul enjoins his readers to rejoice with those who rejoice and to mourn with those who mourn. Sympathy is an important Christian virtue. Christos them, his scholar points out that it requires more of a high Christian temper to rejoice with them that do rejoice than to weep with them that weep. It takes more. Oh, friends, for this nature itself fulfills perfectly, and there is none so hard-hearted as not to weep over him that is in calamity. Do you weep with those that are in calamity, that are hurting right now? But the other requires a very noble soul, so as not only to keep from envy, but even to feel pleasure with the person who is in esteem. Friends, God is calling us to a holy walk. We are to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Christian virtues, friends, that you don't see often these days. When somebody is weeping over their, their calamity, do you weep with them? Do you hurt with them? Mm. It comes back to love. Foundation is love. If you're wondering how to get that, operate in agape and you will weep. Operate in the, in the spirit of agape and you will weep. You, can't, you don't fake this. You can't fake it. When agape is in you, you will weep because God is love and God is weeping. That's what it is, friends. Oh, friends, be of the same mind toward one another. Do not let your mind, verse 16, do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Don't be wise in your own opinion. Don't be conceited, in other words. Have the same mind toward one another. Have the same concern for everyone. Paul's Greek 
here it has a meaning like thinking the same things to one another. Wow. There's no question that, but that Paul is advocating genuine unity. And his words probably are to be taken in the sense of be of the same mind as, I, as in the New King James. Do not be proud. Don't be conceited, my friends. We must not, what? What does it say there? Mm, do not set your mind on high things, right? But associate with the humble. Right? Do not. Oh, I admire that rich person, how he, you know, he's got all this, and so you, you cling to that person. But somebody who doesn't have a lot of toys, well, forget them. They're not in my stature. They're not of my status. That's not what it's saying here, right? We are to love even those that the world doesn't even appreciate. It's interesting. We must be humble. That's what it's saying. Be humble. God's, God is a God of love. Mm. Verse 17. It says, oh, did I? Yeah, I've covered that. Do not be wise. That's, yeah, don't be proud, in other words. Verse 17. Repay no one for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. Wow. Wow. Don't get back at one another. Oh, boy. Hard one to learn, isn't it? Boy, they sure deserve it. I want them to feel what I feel when they do such and such. I want to get back at them. They're nasty. So we get into their level, and we think we're pretty smart, right? But we're not. <laughs> not in the eyes of God. We're not smart. So when somebody does nasty things to that you, what do you do? Not anything nasty. Love them. Bless them. Care for them. Turn the other cheek. Friends, God is calling you to a holy walk. This is a heavenly walk, really. He's preparing us for heaven, my friends. He's preparing us for heaven. God's people who follow this chapter, they're getting ready for heaven. They're getting ready for heaven. God is with them. Verse 17, continuing on here. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. Have regard for the good things. Do what is right. Do what is good. Okay, verse 18. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Oh, friends, this is important that we remember this. Okay? Be consoled by this, okay? God will take care of the avenging. Okay? He will do that. You don't need to worry about that. Okay? You do what he tells you to do. You are not the master. He is. Amen? You are the servant. Paul uses the word slave. But it's in a positive sense. With God. Okay? Servant. A bond servant, he uses that term too. Uh, in the English, we use that term. It's interesting. So we are to cling to God, really. Cling to one another. So that we can get through this. We can encourage one another. Amen? We can support one another. We can pray for one another. We can strengthen one another. We can exhort one another. We can provoke one another. To good works, right? We are called to do this. Hebrews 10 talks about that. Friends, if it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Live peaceably with all men. Wow. This is talking about what? You don't sacrifice. 
sacrifice the truth for peace. You stand for the truth, but where possible, you can live in peace with others. We can. Where possible, we can. And so that's what God calls us to do. You don't have to sacrifice the truth for the sake of peace. But you must love. And that's important. Verse 19. Beloved, do, okay, yes, I've read that already. Okay, sorry about that. I had skipped verse 18 earlier. Verse 20. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. And so... We are thankful by God's grace that we can feed our enemy. We can meet their needs. It's not just related to feeding and literally giving them water only, but meet their needs, whatever it is. It doesn't have to just be food, okay? They may have food, but they need something else. You can help them. You're supposed to care for them. I only heard one yes. We are to care for them, amen? That's what it's in. Now we hear it. I hear you. Okay. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire upon their, his head, right? It will put what? Will it guilt them? No. It will it'll convict them. I don't think it's meant to be like it put on a guilt trip, but it will convict them. All right? God is with you. They will think about it. They will consider. They will consider your, your God by doing those kinds of acts, my friends. Verse 20, uh, verse 21, sorry. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I don't, it's self-explanatory. I don't really need to say too, too much there. So ex, he is exhorting you to, what, the spirit? He was influenced by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is in, exhorting us here. Overcome evil by, overcome, uh, with good. Amen? With good. And so I want to close with a short appeal. With a short appeal. What is God calling you to do? What changes do you need to make to fulfill his high calling in his service? for him. And that'll be different, I think, for every one of you. So, you lay before God and say, Lord, I, I see what you're saying in your word. And, um, you know, I haven't, met, I haven't met the standard. I'm sorry, Lord. I want to I follow you. I want to meet the standard. I want to know your gift that you have for me. I want to know your, the ministry that you called me into. And I want to do what you tell me to do so I can be prepared for heaven. Something to that. You word it the way you word it. That's just your pastor's words, right? So you word it the way it, it means something between you and God. It's a personal relationship with God. God will speak to you as you have that relationship with him. Operate. Be willing to operate in the gifts that you may uh, be used of him to um, reflect his image, his character. God is calling you to make changes. What is he calling you to make a change? That's between you and God. Won't you heed his calling in service for him? Won't you? Is that your desire? Let us stand as we sing. Give of your best to the master as we sing. Um, our closing song is Give All Your Best to the Master. Please stand up as we sing.
I just wanted to let you know that uh, stay behind that uh, Shannon has an announcement. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your love and your care. We thank you for the high calling that you called each one of us in. You've given each one of us gifts. Gift, there are gifts. And uh, we are to be actively you, um, allowing you to use us in ministry, in service. And we've looked at many aspects of Christian behavior. We especially looked at love as the foundation. And so we pray for that agape love, Lord. We ask you to fill us so that me, we may represent you well because we cannot do it on our own. We need your help, O oh God. And we pray that you will continually abide with us. And if we be, we, I shouldn't use the word if, but when we are persecuted, that you will give us the right attitude, the right reaction that's reflective of your character. When we're proclaiming the good news and people mock us, Father, May we not retaliate negatively, but bless them. Bless them. We pray and ask you to give us that kind of a spirit. As Christian soldiers, Lord, we need you. We are preparing because we know it's coming. Persecution will be coming. And we need your help. We need your help. Thank you, Lord, for that. Keep us, Lord, as we serve you day by day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.